Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Adrian Costa. Welcome to another podcast from the Watts uh, Wellness Channel. Um, today will be kind of interesting, a little different. Oftentimes, um, you'll see me facilitating. And uh, well, before I start that off, let me introduce uh, my guest. So, uh, Ro will be with us for today. Um, Ro, if you want to just tell us a little about yourself right now. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Raul Aguirre. I am um, a, a resident of Watts. I work for a nonprofit here in Watts, uh, Children's Institute. We do a lot of work. Um, my job is to do a lot of work in the community. Um, I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a son, of course. Um, but that's just a little of who I am. Um, I'm sure in the conversation a little bit more about Raul. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, yes. Very much appreciate um, you being here um, and participating. So as I was saying, this one will be a little different because when I first agreed to do this, um, I was gonna talk about uh, my depression. I'm very open about that. So if you know me, um, I went through severe depression between the ages of 12 and 27. Um, and for the most part through that, it was, it was very severe and I am now 38. So it kind of come, had a decade out of that. Um, so as I've kind of healed, it's always been a, it's become a position of strength for me. Um, so when I, when I tell my story, the day after I agreed to do this, um, and I'll share, I'm very personally close to animals. My animals are my children. Um, I don't have my own children, so I'm very close. And I personally learn a lot from animals. Um, as far as the way they are and the way they love is very much how I model my life. I consider my pit bulls my role models as a child. Um, so I'm very close. So the day after I agreed to do this, um, unfortunately, I lost my cat the very next day. So this conversation became really real for me because I did not take that well at all. And that's where we got to now kind of have a very raw conversation. And that's why I appreciate uh, Raul being here because we're gonna just have a conversation of how oftentimes, and right now this, I know having spoken to Raul before, I know it's common, but speaking for myself, how when I was younger, I never really learned the language to communicate my emotions. Right. Um, society, told me what I needed to do and how I needed to act as a boy or as a man, um, but never told me what I was supposed to do with the pain that I was feeling or, you know, sadness or anger. Um, there was never really a means to communicate. And that's something I've had to work on now with time and age. And so that's kind of good. So we'll discuss kind of so quick story, because this is in everything is very important for my youth. Um, I was severely depressed between um, 12 and 27. A lot of it, I had a, you know, good childhood. There's not anything specific I can indicate that said like something happened to me that was like specifically. Um, it seems a very common puberty kicked in and my body changed and my body decided that I was no longer going to be happy. And it was just kind of that cut and dry um, yeah. for me. Um, and I don't know if you've had something similar, Raul, because I, I heard um, you something. Actually, I, I, I always grew up, um, I was the youngest of two. And I always grew up, the, I've always wore glasses since I was four years old. I wore glasses. I'm 43 years old now, so it's not the same now as there was before. Not too many options. You had the big bifocals. I was chubby, um, chubby with the glasses. My brother was thin, taller, had all the friends. Uh, back then, long hair. And, and, you know, he was like the cool guy. And I was not even like the cool guy's little brother. I was mm. the little fat nerd, the kid with the glasses. I wasn't even really smart. I just had glasses. Um, never really had friends. Um, they were more of teases my brother was like my main bully um when he left he was two years older than me when he left elementary school like I felt better um I still had the whole still the fat kid with the glasses thing and and it, it I turned to try to make bad friends 
because they were somewhat cool. They weren't fat kids with the glasses. And if they were, you're scared of them anyways. So when I finally left elementary school, I got a little taller. I lost a little bit of weight. Um, my mom bought me contact lenses. I saw the world completely different. I think it was then when I noticed how unhappy I was with myself before. But regardless, I was still in my mind that fat little kid with the glasses. Um, my outside said different, but deep down inside, I didn't feel that. I may have sounded confident, but I didn't mean that. You know, I, I I could have sounded like the tough guy, but deep down inside, I was terrified of your response. I was just trying to change my, who I was with the change of my body. But it wasn't working because in my head, I was already that. I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't know how to come up. I, my mom found out like a year ago that my brother was my boy. That's something that, it was a hush hush thing. Uh, I was raised by only women. My father was never in the picture. So it was my brother and me that were the males. And my aunts were insulting. What are you going to cry like a little girl? No, I'm a man. Men, boys don't cry. Why would I cry? Um, hide. When you have to go hide to cry as a little kid, is I don't know. So as a grown up, your hiding turns into, I'll keep it inside. I'll keep it inside until someone cuts you off. <sighs> yeah. I had a fat kid with the glasses just coming out because you cut me off. And I think that was like a real bad downfall because in the age where I was supposed to learn this and that, I knew love. I knew my mom hugged me. I knew love, but that's it. Um, happiness, excitement, everything fell in one category. I grew up with they're sad and they're happy. That's it. Yeah. Smile, smile when you're happy. Stay away when you're sad. That was okay. So or, or do something about it. If you're sad, do something about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Don't cry about it. Do something about it. Yes, and so that kind of made it really difficult for me because once I was a certain age, it was hard for me to go back and who was I going to learn all this from? Who am I going to go talk to? I couldn't have the the homie down the street say, "Hey, well, you know what? I'm feeling a little sad today." No, because then I'd be the laughing stock of the neighborhood. So regardless of what's going on, yes, I'm a tough guy. doesn't matter. But it mattered. I could tell now it matters. There's times where I get emotional watching a movie now. And it's okay. You know, I yeah. I don't wipe off and I don't hide. It's like, a, oh, this was a sad movie or happy movie. I have tons of more emotions now. It's not just sad and happy. There's, you know, tons of other things. And honestly, <laughs> No matter how this sounds, you kind of enjoy life a little bit more, spreading out your emotions because you sure. get the difference between upset and, and frustrated and sad. There's three different emotions there. And maybe sadness is not as harsh as angry. And now I can separate that. And it just, like, it flows a little better now. Unfortunately, I'm 43 years old. <laughs> right. Hey. Better late than ever. That's what I was definitely. Is, is it similar for you where sadness and madness and being mad, like sadness and anger almost go hand in hand? Yeah. When I grew up, that was part of the of the sad part. Frustration, anger, everything that was in that category. Uh, happy and other things were in this one, and sad and angry were in that one. If you were sad, when I was I was a very aggressive kid. When I was sad, I punched stuff. Uh, never necessarily people because I was a little scared, <laughs> but like a door, a refrigerator, half my broken fingers were due to me punching something. Maybe because that pole or that door was the person who I really wanted to punch, or maybe that's what I wanted to punch, like society, the world. So maybe that door was connected to what I was because. I, even thinking about it now, our conversation is just building up to this because we agreed to do this about a week ago. And yeah. we, had a weekend, we had a weekend to just, you had something horrible happen to you and uh, that's been sitting in there. And I just been thinking of, wow, you know, this is what I went through. This could have gone this way, but it didn't. I wasn't able to cry in my great grandmother's funeral because there was other men there. I wasn't going to live like that week, guy. 
when my grandmother passed away, I was a lot, lot older. I cried and hugged her. I was able to let that emotion out regardless. I, everyone was blocked out. It was me and her. And that was, I, I thought that that was our time together. And it felt good to be able to not be that tough guy because she raised me. She was like my mom. My mom worked all her life. My mom was my dad. My grandmother was my mom. And it hurt a lot. And for me to be able to at least be the age where I was confident in myself or even learn my emotions enough so where I was able to express that the way I wanted to. I mean, I didn't, I was going to say, I'm not usually the type to yell when I'm sad, but maybe depending on the situation, yes. I have just got a little louder emotional, but that day I did exactly what I wanted to do. I laid on her, I cried with her, I, I maybe whimpered a little loud, but it wasn't, uh, I wasn't worried about anything because I felt, I'm, oh, I'm okay to do that. Like, it's okay for me to feel these things. I'm a father. So I would never want my kids to hide any emotion. From I talk to them. I tell them, if you ever want to talk to me as a father, I'm your dad. I could take that hat off and put the man hat on. You want to talk to me as a man? Just let me know in the beginning so I don't take the wrong things. And, and I want to hear that. I mean, my kids... My youngest is 15. My other one's 21. I think it was about two years ago when I stopped giving them their good night kiss in their head. Um, he's 21, so he was 20 years old. The other one was about 14, about to be 14. And it, it, it didn't stop in a bad way. It just stopped and we moved on to something different. Uh, we still acknowledge each other. We tell each other we love each other, not necessarily with the words, but with the actions. Uh, we see each other in a certain way. There's respect. I call them bros sometimes. Um, I call them fools sometimes. And back and forth, like, you know, my 15-year-old, they're all taller than me. Um, they'll come <laughs> and stand up. Like, And when I was young, that would have been a threat to me. Like, you, what, excuse me? <laughs> and now I take it as in what they're doing. And, you know, that's not, maybe they're not hugging me and telling me they love me. But this is the way we learn to express ourselves. Yeah. Um I could tell, they could tell in me, I could tell in them, you're sad, something's wrong, what's going on with you? And I never had that. No one's ever asked me what's wrong, um, what's going on with you? Why are you happy? You know, even that, why are you happy? I mean, something must have made you happy, what? Usually it's a, like, man, you look down, what's wrong? But never, man, you look great. Yeah, you look so excited, what's going on with you? There's just a lot of things that us as men have missed out on, um, the yeah. culture. The culture, you know, Hispanic, brown and black people have always been made to think that you share an emotion whatsoever. You are the weakest person around. And that's that was our worst fear. I can't be weak. That's right. not what my culture allows. But in even in, in that, as we're and this was something like you said, we've had a week to deal with this. I think part of that is part <laughs> of our history where black and brown men have been uh criminalized so much that part of us have had to kind of put out that defense because of literally being physically attacked and needing to protect kind of family um but like you like you said so much what i really is we've missed out on so much because of that because we we're that's not living that's surviving and that's what our ancestors had to do for us and they've done that they did that for us and for me, the way I kind of see it, the best way I can respect my ancestors is by using the privileges they get, they gave me. So I no yeah. longer have to necessarily fight for my life like my ancestors did. Right. So let me now express differently with the next generation so that they don't, because like one of the big things for me, and this is where it was like really weird. Um, so, you know, public sees me as a very calm dude. Um, I have my, you know, social persona and it's not like it's a fake thing, but when I'm out in the world, I kind of figure everyone has problems just as I do. So I kind of just try to have that experience be the best as possible because it's, that works for me too. Like yeah. if, if I don't have a negative experience then I, it ends up being a net positive, but my mind, and this was ever, this was where I I remember because this was when 12 and like I blame my mind for everything, but that's where really like, I guess, hormones and stuff kicked in and my mind just became so active. It just never stops. And that's still even present to this day. 
Oh um, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know you're in meetings with me, you know. Um, but it it never stops. But one of the things too, and this was where this conversation became very real to me, is like I was saying before a week ago, um, depression and all that was something I reflected on and was a strength, and I, you know I kind of had that to draw. When I found my cat, all that sh- went out the window. Like yeah. every strategy, everything I had was gone. Mm-hmm. And it was just, I realized and I have even, because a lot of what I do, and this is kind of where I started thinking of the historical context and things like that. A lot of my survival and going back to survival versus living and feeling is based off of being prepared. So I spend a lot of my moments preparing for situations so that when it goes, you know, hits rock bottom, I'm ready to kind of deal with it. And, you know, being right now, I'm kind of, I'm isolating because my parents are older. So um, to visit them, I had, my cats were the only thing I had. And I, before the pandemic, when the pandemic started, I, I told both of them, I helped them up. I go, I know you all are older. You got to make it through this with me. Just like we can, we can discuss life and the life cycle and all that after. Just make it through this with me. Um, and especially, and this goes on to too about expression and things like that. Um, the cat I lost, um, her name was Love, um, was Love. She was the love in the household. So where I was, and even I have another male cat, his name is True, because he's a true homie. Um, We're very chill. We're not, and both of us, as even as a human being, as we're not very expressive. And that was the cat that was reminding me, dude, smile, you know, and it was, that's why I find my, my animals have always been my inspiration, because it's just that smile, like, hey, come play with me. When that happened, all that went out the door and it scared me. It mm-hmm. scared me because that's where I was being. Sadness and, and anger go hand in hand for me. Yeah. It's, it's just like the rage and the pain. And it's, and I wrote about it a bit, but it's, and this is, this is where I was able to talk about it with strength. When that, when that moment, I was like, oh, where's all that strength? Like, where's all that, all my strategies? <laughs> all the coping like, skills. Yeah, it's like, I know, I know what I need to do. I can't do it right now. Um, and that was just that real reminder of still understanding that I still am growing and that that's a process and that there will be. But, you know, I handled it. Real, I mean, I cried all day, um, but I handled it as best as I could. Um, and you know, ultimately went on, but that's where it was. I was scared because, so I, I also, I have holes in my doors. Um, like you were saying, my, my parents' house has a hole in my living room door. My house here has a hole in a door. Um, and for me, that's how I used to express anger too. I didn't do it to anybody else because I figured, you know, why, um, you know, why mess why I hurt them. But this was the other conversation I want to have with you too. Um, so I didn't want to do it to anybody else, but I need, there was just so much pain deep. And the way I kind of kind of have expressed in hours in my boy state and in that state where I'm not fully able myself to be, you know, a man or an adult and feel like, you know, responding more like a child where it's just raw emotion. Yeah. Um, it brought me back really yeah to that thing of I still need to learn how to deal with pain and sadness right and anger as different things because immediately I just wanted to hit stuff and I just want and I haven't I haven't hit a door in a really really long time probably since my so probably before even 27 so probably like when I think I was 25 I have a date on the door but um so you know, that, but it immediately went back there. And it was just like this. And this was the kind of the component you brought it up earlier. I've never been one to seek a fight, but I've also never been one to back down. And what I've found in myself, and this is where it comes kind of to unhealthy methods of dealing 
all I wanted to do that day was go to a bar and give someone the excuse to mess with me. Yeah, that I wish you would. <laughs> you were in that, I wish you would. I wish oh. you would. Where you, where you said where like when someone's standing to you is a threat. I wanted that. And I was craving that. Where it was just like, and that's not who I want to be. You know, and that, that's why like inside I can logically think, this is not who you want to be. Because inside all I want to do is destroy myself. That's the real of it. I'm yeah. looking for someone to destroy because I want to destroy myself. I can't take it. Um, but it was that rawness of like, dude, you're no better. Like, you're not a kid. Like, that is not. Luckily, the bars are closed. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> so that was one that, like, okay, let's think again. Yeah. Maybe I, could think I actually of it did not even think about that during that moment. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that was another thing. And it was always kind of that concept of two that we touched on that never really being allowed that opportunity to cry of always ultimately being asked by um, society. And I know we're going to do this in Spanish too, so we'll really get into, be able to touch into uh, Latinx culture, um, but just American culture and it's uh, male toxicity of privilege, really. And then like, you know, seeing that and uh, feeling, oh, and this was something that I wanted. So one thing that I've been very reflective of is how much, I put on my partners for my happiness. And I don't know, I, I know you're you're married. Um, I'm single, but that's where it was just a lot of reasons, right? Uh, <laughs> but the like when when I lost my cat, I realized how much I used love for love. Like I, it wasn't as much inside of myself. And I know that's something that I've had to grow with my relationships because I know my first relationship, I didn't even like to be hugged and I didn't even understand like holding hands. Right. And like one of the things too, is like I bought my, I bought a king size bed because I'm like, cool, you know, we can all chill. And then I'd end up only using like a fourth of it and, <laughs> and not being, not understanding emotion. I'd be like, why upset? You know, not like where I'd yell at her or anything, but upset. Like, why do I, why don't I have bed? Like, why can't I have, and she was, I want to cuddle with you. I right. want to be, and I'm, oh, oh, you know, <laughs> like my yeah. partners have really shown me a lot, but it was a lot of that where it's just like, oh, like you're sitting next to me, not because you're trying to be in my space or control what I'm doing or yeah. because, and because control is a big thing with me. I've, I need to feel independent. So it's like, you're not on me because you're trying to control me or watch what I'm doing. Right. You're near me because you actually like me. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. And then, so they, but then. But we it, don't know that feeling. Yeah. We don't know what that means. So I do know what threat means. So get off of me. But I don't know what, well, I didn't know what it's okay means. I've never had that. I've never had the, come here, it's going to be fine. No, calm down. It'll be, you'll be good. Okay. Yeah. I guess he said, I'll be good. So, so I'll be good. Yeah. And I, I know we've discussed it. Like I basically grew up being told I mean, specifically by my dad, you're born, you work, you die. That's that was, that's his interpretation of life. Um, that's how I thought it was. Yeah. Right. That doesn't sound like there's any space for enjoyment. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> And that, that is, that's literally been a conversation where I've had with him because luckily I still have him around, but I mean, he still has a lot of that pain in him. And it's, it's a conversation I have with him that I, I tell him you're holding on to that for whatever reason you still want to hold on to that. If you ever care to share it, I'm here, but I'm going to recognize that it's there, even if you don't want to. Right. And that's how ultimately that's how scary that is for him. Mm hmm. That must be terrifying for him because although you, you know, grew up in a different era, you learned a whole bunch of different things. You're in everything. I've seen you. I've known you for a little bit over a year and you put your hands into everything. So you learn a lot of things for yourself. I mean, trial and error, of course, but here's this man that learned this way and this is what he's known because this is what he passed on to his kids. His kids learned different and now his kids coming to help him. 
wow, what do you mean? I don't, that's scary. Stay away from me. You're threatening me. My dad right? did not, does not like that at all. And where we go into uh, Latinx culture, very machista. So the idea yeah. of me questioning him is disrespect. Yeah. Um, where, and that's why it's taken a long time where, you know, now he actually, well, at least listen, he's, I mean, I don't think he's ever told me I'm right and he's wrong, but right. yeah, yeah. you know, right. You yeah, can tell yeah. him. But at least now he'll listen where, like you were saying before, it, he took it as a specific threat to him where it would anger him. And it's like, yeah. you know, yo soy tu papa. You know, my dad's I'm, I'm, I'm your dad. You do it because yeah. I'm your dad. Um, yeah, that's it. No, that's the only reason. Right. For yeah. explaining because I said so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because life is you're born, you work, you die. So what are you yeah. complaining about? Yeah. Yeah. And that's been, um, Ultimately, one of those things that really, yeah, as an adult, I've been really able to reflect on and how even as I've advanced and grown as a, as a man, there's still a lot of those tendencies where something traumatic can happen and I want to go to what was comfortable to me. Like I want <laughs> to go what I feel society will allow me to do versus what is actually scary to do and that's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, because it is, it is kind of scary. I mean, if you think about it, a conversation flowing and I have to let you in to my little circle that I've created and how are you going to take that? Are you going to, you know, throw it in my face later? Are you going to see it as a weakness? You might see it as a strength. I don't know that. That's not what I'm, my concentration is on the negative. Mm -hmm. uh, will you use it against me later? Like yes, yes. I don't see it as an oh well agent's gonna be like, oh you know, Raul's in touch with his emotions. That's cool. I can talk to him. I'm gonna see it more as an oh look, Raul's a little punk. <laughs> He's over there crying about something, and that would be my fear. Um we were talking about something like expressions or or emotions that we've hidden. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I've been in jail a few times and <clears throat> I've seen I've been sentenced to a few years. Um the most was five years at a time and I go get sentenced, come back to the cell. Five years, I saw people walk in to the courthouse, come out, got sentenced to two, three life sentences. No, I was crying for my five years in my cell under my blanket because that's five years of my life. How are you walking with a straight face after being sentenced to your death to your, until you die there? Because that's the face we have to put. If not, we're punks and that's horrible because in there is probably where you need the most you lost your family you lost all contact with people if you have the money you could call them if they have a phone I mean there's people that are here from other countries you know I can't really reach out I can't call you collect and that's probably when you need a friend when you need to reach out to someone but not in there you have to be the tough guy or else you know we're talking about five years of horrible treatment if I even look weak and right. that's that's torture if you, uh, aside the fact that you're away from society you're you're being treated a certain way and you're not allowed to feel like that's just scary because I'm not I forget what sad is I forget what you know I would funny that's the only thing I'm able to express all the time I've always been able to laugh I could make a joke out of anything but I think that became my 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 defense mechanism. If something is too sad for me to, I crack jokes at my great grandmother's wedding. I mean, great grandmother's funeral because I didn't know what else to, I couldn't cry because I wasn't allowed to because I'm gonna cry like a little girl, my aunt said. But, you know, the priest is wearing a dress, haha. <laughs> and, you know, somebody cracked a smile and okay, yeah, I let mine out. That's me probably crying for help. but. I can identify that now. Now this is what I do for a living. I work with people and I can identify, I can look at you and say something's wrong with you. But I still now, I've been doing what I do for about 10 years. Still now there's emotions in me that I'm discovering. Um, and with that, having to discover how to deal with them. Because sometimes it's still scary to, to be afraid to feel helpless. That's something that I have to, because feeling helpless to me makes, me makes me angry, which makes me sad, which makes me depressed, 
which takes me anxiety. I'm anxious. Just like boom, that one thing touched every emotion I had in my body. And how am I supposed to deal with all of those at the same time by myself? Because I don't feel it's safe for me to say, hey, Adrian, this is what I'm going through right now. The fact that you felt confident, that you felt the strength or the need to be able to reach out to me and Shakela when your cat passed away, that showed strength. That showed that I could go punch the door. I could go hide out. I could do that. I could reach out. Um, maybe by saying it makes it just a little more real. You could start processing it a little better. Um, whether it's remember, of course, it's easy for me to say, just remember the good times. Remember she brought love to your home. That's not the same that you're feeling because you had her there. And like you said, that's what brought you the love. But the fact that you know that she brought that love, the fact that you identified that the male cat is more like a typical male and the fact that you were able to speak about it to people that you trusted. That's awesome because you identified an emotion, identified something that would help and identified people that you trusted to even share that with. That's a big, big deal. So for me to hear that you suffered with depression, anxiety as a kid and, and to see you now, how you are, how confident, how eager to do everything, help to better yourself, to help someone else, to just that, I, I, I don't see it. I don't see the, the person you spoke of because before I would have said, well, this is his front. You know, he's supposed to look happy. He's supposed to look confident. But because I know you, I know that you learn to accept those emotions and deal with them. So that's pretty cool. And not be afraid to learn to deal with them. Because that's the thing. I may not know all my emotions or how to deal with them, but I'm more than willing to learn. You know, if you've gone, gone through something, shit, tell me, you know, maybe it'll help. And before it would have been like, oh, you went through that? What a wuss. And it's not, now I think it's a little more wussy if you don't say it, because you're just going to swallow all those emotions. And, you know, while I'm here, happy because I'm able to say, oof, I had a rough week. So, and that's what I appreciate all those words, by the way, brother, really do. Um, but uh, you, you really, you, you covered it a lot where that's where in, in that time I really had to think, what is really harder, sharing my emotions or punching a door? Like which one should scare, which one's like sharing my emotions is far scarier and far harder. Like there's, I could, I could punch someone else. I could punch a door. That's going to be easy. Not going to solve my problems, but it's going to be easy. There's nothing Maybe hard about that. I've never cast for months. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Not, nothing, you know, nothing hard about that really, you know, for no. For me in this society the and hard part anything. yeah the hard part was like okay you've been at you've been this voice of strength because it's all in your past now you've got that real like this is this is real this is gonna this you know this, this is, is it this is a pain for this you is like, yeah. this is not a test right this is yeah this ain't this ain't a this is and that's where yeah like it really got me where that's and like you said i wrote like that email um and, you know, I reached out to a few other people and stuff. And it was that idea of, I got to do what I learned from her. I got it. Like, if that love, I and that's, you know, kind of bringing that full circle. I can't <laughs> depend on someone else's life to be my source of love. That love always has to come from inside. Um, because if I don't love myself, then that's where I seek those outlets for destruction. Because yeah. at the end of the day, like I was saying, I don't. I didn't necessarily want to fight someone because I disliked them. Mm -hmm. I wanted to fight someone because I, I didn't like what I was feeling and I want, I didn't want to feel that way. And logically I shouldn't have felt that way, but our body isn't logical. We're emotional right. beings. And that took, so it's just like, nah, fam. Like, <laughs> that, yeah. And so it's just that idea, you know, you know exactly what I'm just, so, but really being able to understand that, okay, now this is, these are the times you need to learn to communicate because this is hard. Like these are the hard times. And this is where you really prove for me, are you a boy where you're still growing up or are you a man and an adult in society where we can express ourselves 
um, recently because we've expected that from women always. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> expected to share their emotion <laughs> and then it's just like we it's expected and we see the health in that and and so we'll complain about it sometimes it doesn't make sense to us but like we we can see the clear health in that it's it's like it's known it's science at this you know it's yeah. it doesn't matter gender anything this is beyond we're social creatures we're emotional creatures we need to let that out because you never know when it can become too much yeah. Like exactly like had I not been taking care of myself as much through the pandemic and hadn't been in a good mental state maybe I wouldn't have been strong enough that Friday to stay home you know and that's what it's ultimately for me about in that preparation I mean it, it's still going back to a lot of the concepts I, I learned of being prepared but being prepared and allowing myself the opportunity to feel and live which is I think the, the key theme that I feel that has come up through this is that's just not living. When you have that day and you have all that, it's just, it's not living, it's surviving. Yeah. And it sucks. Yeah. It sucks. It's, yeah. I mean, there's so many things that you miss out in, like, oh, look how cute the baby is. I think babies are adorable. But now I could say that when before, like, baby, okay, yeah, that's cool. Baby was born. Congratulations. Yeah. But now it's like, I want to carry the baby. <laughs> you know, to take a picture, selfie with the baby. Um, for real, like, oh, you'll see it on my social media. Like, really, that's, and that's cool. Like, that's okay. Like, I've never been into, like, Star Wars movies because in my mind, those are childish. I, as far as Star Wars, I know what Family Guy showed. It's wrong. Yeah. Everything that Family Guy has shown us is wrong. <laughs> but, I like want to start seeing things like that. I don't know how to play video games at all. Um, that seems to be like a great pastime for everyone. But I don't know how to do that because when I was growing up, that was childish. You can't do that, right? I can't do that because I'm a 13-year-old man. So how could I be childish? And I see like I, I, I missed out. I, I was in sports mainly because that's what the tough guy did. Not necessarily because, oh, look, this is what I love doing. This is where I want to take my life. It just more was like that was what was supposed to happen. And, and now at this point, I don't care what's supposed to happen. I just want to do my own thing. I just want to see where life takes me. Maybe I'll be the example or maybe I'll be the mistake. Let's not do that. Let's do differently. I mean, I have kids, so I would love for them to be able to learn from me, um, from my mistakes, as opposed to making their own. I mean, I'm sure some of them they have to make on their own, but at least they were able to see you know, this guy messed up, dealt with the consequences. This is the way he dealt with it. Um, there's times even now when it's not as easy to be like, okay, I'm upset. Let me calm down, go outside, walk around. There's times where I'm upset and I'm upset. I don't know what to do. Main thing, the first thing that I learned to do is to not hurt anyone verbally or any way is walk away. Uh, go to my room, go to the backyard, take a little walk, sit on the porch, just to, it's really easy to just blur something out. Um, and I, like we both said, I don't want to hurt someone. <laughs> it's just, if I say F you, it's not because of you. It's not to you. It's just, it's beyond you. You know, it's not, and I'd rather, I learned that much for sure. So I'm able to regroup, leave, walk away, walk away, just to make sure that it doesn't go the wrong way. Um, as far as sad, I think I express it a little too much now. Like I'll tell my wife, I'm feeling sad. Babe, can you come hide and hug me? And she's not as emotional as I am. So it's like a no, <laughs> leave me alone type thing. But I don't mind it as much because I know what I want. I know what I need. And I ask for it. And then there's a rare time where she'll give me that hug or that kiss. And they're like, yes. <laughs> because I asked for it because I felt that's what I needed. And sometimes just asking for it helps because it's just, okay. I asked for it. Maybe I didn't really even need the help. Maybe I just needed to say it or something. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. It'll come back later and maybe figure out another way to learn to deal with it. Maybe learn from someone else's examples. I mean, maybe not what you went through, I'm going to go through or work for you is going to work for me, but let's, let's help. Let's see what could work for me. I mean, maybe you tried a few things. Tell me some of them. You know, maybe I'll try them. Maybe they don't work. Maybe they do. Yeah. But, yeah, 
I totally feel that we were, we lost out a lot in life for that. And that's where I'm at too, in the same way where you are. I don't want youth to get to 27 and just overcome their depression, you know, like yeah. younger. And we, like you said, everybody is going to have their own methods for health. You know, that's, that's the important part of knowing yourself. Because if you don't know yourself, then that's how you get into these other situations. But, um, but yeah, having these conversations, being open um, is really, I think, how we can help um, the next generation and give them a, just a different example of, hey, it's actually a lot harder and you're actually a lot stronger if you can talk about yeah. the stuff that hurts you the most. Um, because at the end of the day, and uh, walking away with something I, I always, I still do, and so I can get back. But the key point now that I know as an adult is I need to walk back where I can't just always walk away. Yeah. I need yeah. to walk back and deal with it yeah. when ready. I'm working on that still. Because yeah. sometimes better for me is to walk away and forget. Yeah. And that didn't fix it. That just pushed it back. It just right. stood on the back burner for a little bit. Who knows how long. When... Yeah okay, this is what upset me, this is why I was wrong, you know, this is why I said what I said, or this is why I felt the way I felt, uh, or this is what I understood that you felt or said, and we tear it up and it's better. Where there's a time where I just walk away and push it to the back, and it doesn't go away. It's right. just ready to come back out for any little reason. It doesn't yeah. even have to be about the same conversation no more. It yeah. is, what, did you really not give me a napkin? <laughs> yeah, it just builds. That's why, yeah, it just builds. And it's just so unhealthy because it eats away at us. Yeah. Um, oh, but these conversations definitely imagine if we were able to have this conversation even as high school students. Oh, okay, sure. everything would have gone a whole different way. I mean, even like the 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 nurture everything, the nurturing that you give to your children. I mean, men typically, you know, they have the kids and okay, yeah, kind of looks like me as my son. Okay, fine, I go to work, provide for him. That's it. You know, it's never, okay, well, it's my weekend to take care of them. I mean, my wife has gone to Mexico for a week and I've stayed with my kids. And that's cool. Like we're constantly thinking, okay, what are what are the boys gonna do this week? And like, what are we gonna do? Like, mm-hmm. and like even to the point, like, I miss your mom. Oh yeah, and they'll sit here and be like, Oh, you know, when my dad when you were gone, my dad said that he missed you. And that doesn't like it's not like a shot, don't say it. It's more like yeah, you know, I was able to tell my kids, like, hey, I miss your mom. Uh, but sometimes it's hard for me to sleep when she's gone because I'm used to sleeping right next to her. My meals were all thrown off because we eat together. So, but the fact that I spent the time with my kids and even that they're younger, but they were, they recognized that I was missing something. So they'd come to the living room and hang out for a little bit, maybe watch a movie and then take off and hide in their room and play their video games. But in their eyes, maybe like, oh, we gave him a little bit of time. He's cool now. Yeah. So even them recognizing that at their age, I think my wife and I are doing a decent job so far. I mean, we still don't know. I don't know. They might have something deep down inside that we don't know about yet. But I feel that I'm trying to do my best to make it okay to feel that. Um, but never tease them because of any emotion. Um, I did tease them when they started getting older and dressing themselves and kind of like the whole skinny jean thing. Yeah, that was and then like, I'm with you at that. Teeny and then high, like, like we used to tease people that look like you. Yeah. Where are you and supposed then, to fit your keys and wallet? That's just my question. I, well, I can know. totally see you <laughs> the quarter in your pocket. Yeah. Thinking about it, I'd rather have them dressed like that than the one I was dressed when I was a kid because you looked at me and you just thought the worst of the worst. Yeah. And then at them, I look at them and they're like, you know, they have their long hair and they don't comb it if they don't need to. And it's the, like the, the fact that I know how to run holding my belt buckle says so much about my like it's just like why why can I wear my pants like without having to hold my pants up when I ran like how is that efficient like you know, it's just like if I'm actually in threat but you can get caught in your pockets <laughs> the house phone in there if you want to. no yeah. but I, I think things conversations like these would, would totally help if you know, not necessarily like saying, oh, well, like I didn't grow up with my father. I don't think I needed a father to learn these emotions. I think I just needed someone who I maybe not saw as an equal, but saw as in 
I could relate to this person a little bit. Preferably a male. You know, a woman could do a lot. My mom was a great dad. I would give my mom Father's Day presents. Mm -hmm. But I could never compare myself to her. Um, I'm going to feel a little bit different because I'm a male. Mainly because I don't know that feeling. I wasn't always, oh, it's okay for you to cry. No, no, no. When my cousin was okay for her to cry. But mine wasn't. We both fell. But right. she could cry and I had to tough that out. Go wash your knee and you're fine. Yeah. But you're carrying her. <laughs> like, and, and that was okay at the time. But now I've, I've carried my kids. Now. He broke his ankle like a year ago and I carried him. He's taller than me. His feet were probably dragging on the floor. But I, that's okay. And I want my kids to grow up that way. And I want my kids to teach their kids even further more than I have. Because I didn't change my life around until my kids, my kids weren't babies. They were already, well, my youngest one was probably two or three years old when I changed my life around. So some of them didn't get to see, some of them got to see the worst of me and now differently. And my youngest got to see mainly me changing. So he got to see, I guess, the best in me and changing now, but I think that because of the relationship I have, I've always told my wife that she taught me how to be a mom before I learned how to be a dad. Um, mainly, I guess, and I'm thinking about it now, it's, it's me throwing a shot at us men again because she showed me how to be a mom, loving, caring, and that's supposed to be either one, right? But that's the way I interpret it. I interpret it as in, you showed me how to be a mom before I learned how to be a dad when everything's supposed to be, e other than giving birth, everything's supposed to be equal. I mean, and, and I don't think men feel comfortable with it yet. You know how fun it is to play baseball with your kids? It's amazing. When you get that opportunity, you're going to think back and say, Raul, you were right. I mean, hanging out with your friends is great, but to be able to play with your kids, your boys, and, you know, you hit yourself, you cry, it's okay. Um, Dad, were you scared? Yes, I was terrified. And that's, I don't know, the fact that they feel comfortable saying, Dad, were you scared? Yeah, yeah and I was, I was scared and I'll tell them. And I'm the first to admit now at my age, what I'm feeling. I'm the first to tell you, Agent, I don't like that person. Agent, I don't feel comfortable around this person. Agent, that person makes me a little afraid. For whatever reason, whether it's their face, their attitude, they remind me of something or someone, I am okay saying that. And the more you know me, the more you'll see. Ask anyone that knows me. I'm very, very open with my emotions. Um, I actually do have, you told me last week, I do have my box of tissue, just in yeah. case. You, know. <laughs> you told me, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you told me I had it. I, um, I was, I'm more than prepared. I'm not the type, I will not hide my emotions. I can't. I'm not going to take that from you. I know I'm 43 years old, but I, my, I think I'm halfway through life. So I still have a whole other life that I've had that I could try to enjoy a little better. And I probably do a better job with my grandchildren and a better job with my great grandchildren. But the important thing is that I kind of broke that chain. Yeah. And I'm kind of moving towards, it's okay for us to be men with emotions. You know, it's, it's humans. Yeah. We're just human, human beings. Yeah. It's not necessarily because we're men or women. It's just we're human beings and we have the emotion. Some of us have shorter hair than others. You know, it's, yeah, that's, that's really, I mean, it's maybe, coming all shapes and sizes, just like every, everything. Yeah. Um, and yeah, man, I, I really appreciate uh, this conversation. I know we have to start um, wrapping up, but I think the big message, even just for me, what I hope anybody who listens to this, but especially um, young men, don't deny yourself the opportunity to live. Because that, at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to communicate, that a lot of the stuff we thought we couldn't do as youth was really denying ourselves the opportunity to enjoy life. We were trying to do something else that was different. And we're older now, and I think the best thing and what I really appreciate about Raul is he's always growing. There's always that process of it's never too late to keep growing, and you can always make tomorrow a better day. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate this conversation. This was definitely really real. 
Um, oh, me too, Adrian. This, I mean, this is probably like a therapy. I'm gonna end up owing you some money. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. I feel, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I feel like I know you a little more. I feel like you should know me a little more, and I feel that I can speak to you a little more now after this. I don't have to hide anything I don't feel from you no more because I pretty much opened up as much as I as much as I needed to for that you could see so that you could see I, I could yeah. talk to you. and you could feel the same way anything I'm the last yeah. person that'll sit there and judge just yeah. throw it out there I'll listen I'll shut up if that's what you want uh, I'll yeah. talk bad about someone if that's what you want <laughs> let yeah. me know and, and we could work together I mean this is and vice versa I mean don't think that because of my age, well, actually, I, I thought you were way younger. Uh, <laughs> but don't think because of the age thing, that makes no difference. I'm as childish as I can, <laughs> yeah. I can compare myself to a preteen. So, yeah, and that's a good thing to have that in you also. But, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for everyone that listened to us. I hope our conversation meant something. It hit somewhere. Um, none of this was rehearsed. I had no idea what he was going to say. He had no idea. This was literally a conversation that we had. And, you know, if, if anyone feels comfortable enough, maybe you guys want to reach out to Adrian and tell him, look, this is what I'm going through. Do you guys know anyone or have you guys went through this? Let me hear about it. Sometimes just hearing that other people have gone through the same thing makes it a little more regular. And now we can move forward from there. So, yeah, no, thank you, Adrian. Thank you to all your followers. Thank you to Community Wellness advisory committee yeah. <laughs> you said it you got it right i was the one who was struggling <laughs> but i have to uh, kind of say the lettering in my head but no thank you. i really appreciate it. this was helpful for me also this was another step on me growing same uh and i think it did also a lot uh, for my healing as we were discussing just the different components and allowing myself to be real in the moment and vulnerable in the sense of like yeah connecting with like yeah i know exactly what you're feeling um, and yeah, thank, thank you for everyone who sticked around uh, or stuck around. Please, if you want to see more of this, we also definitely want to hear different perspectives. We definitely want to cover the youth. So if you have any suggestions, things like that, you like this, please let us know in the comment. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful. Once again, Ro, thank you. I love you, brother. Love you. Really appreciate this. And yes. Thank you all, and we will be seeing you soon again. Bye.